welcome back to my channel. So today we have a video here with my beautiful boyfriend, Stephen, and we are gonna go through all the areas of London and give three words that describes them. So neither of us are actually from London, right? I'm from um, up north in Lancashire, near Blackpool and Preston. I'm from the south, south of Italy. You're originally from Italy, I was born, right? Yeah, Sicily. You're born in Sicily. Ben, you grew up in the Midlands, right, in Stamford? Uh, yes. Is that the Midlands? Yes, Midlands, it's the middle, isn't it? I was going to say it's Peterborough, Stamford, it's Midlands, yeah, yeah sorry. It's not Midlands, north or yeah. south. Um, so we both like came to London, I was like 23, 24, and you were a bit older, I think, when you came? Yeah, I came here when I was 14. No, you did not. I was like Dick Whittington, I had like a bag over my shoulder, and I came down to London. So um, we both really didn't know like all the different areas and I guess you hear them on TV or on Monopoly and things like that. So what we're going to do is going to run through all the different areas and just give our sort of three word impressions of each area. So are you ready for this? Three words. That's it. For each area. That's it. Okay. So the first one on the list <laughs> is Acton. We often drive through Acton when we're yeah. leaving London and for me the first thing that I would I think of is roundabouts. Oh yeah, yeah, that's, got, that's Hanger Lane, is that Acton? Yeah, it's like that massive roundabout that you drive through and it's always like really busy. So that's definitely my first one. Is there a football team in Acton? Yeah, Acton FC. There you Google go. Google it. Just mail it up. What? So I would say roundabout, traffic, and what else? So you said immediately good value for money, didn't you? Because yeah. the house prices there are up and coming. It's up and coming. It's well, you know, there's these different areas of London where people the stage and say, I think Acton has got some great attributes to be the number one up and coming district of London. Well, and I'll tell you for why. It's North London, okay. right? So for people that want to live in that commuter belt north of London, it's in London. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. And it's not far from Wembley. Yeah. And Wembley is the home of football. There you go. And what else is good about Acton? I mean, it, there's a lot of takeaway shops there. I remember when we drive through, yeah, there's like there loads of takeaways. Takeaway. So I reckon it'd be good for delivery drivers. There I you go. It's good. So that's Acton. Mm. So next on my list here, okay, is Olgate. So Olgate's like in the city of London. Yeah. And when we say the city of London, that's like mm. an actual borough, isn't it? Mm. Called the City of London. It has its own mayor, has its own police, I mm. think. Well, and Olgate it's, is one of many in the City of London, isn't it? That's right. Yeah, and that's where it is. And it's so, and it's basically like the square mile around. Is it St Paul's Cathedral? And mm. it's where all the banking and stuff is. Mm. It's spelt Aldgate, but it's pronounced Algate. So for me, I think of just misspelling. You think of banking. What well, word? Specifically insurance. It's where all the oh. insurance areas are. That's that's okay. that I, I say. Know. So I'd say insurancey. That's okay. a word, isn't it? Describing a word. It's insurancey. Insurancey. And there's um there's a really cool bar in all game. Okay. It's, I think it's um is it Tower Fifty Two? It's on the top of there. Oh right. That's in Allgate, isn't that's, it? Is that in Allgate? Yeah. So I think like. Isn't that Liverpool ah, Street? Insurance rooftop and stuffy. Okay. Next is Angel. Angel. So my immediate thought is Monopoly. Angel Islington, one of the blue tiles. Mm. I always think of that. I also think of the left wing Labour Party. Oh, Jeremy Corbyn. Yeah, like he. Oh, his Jeremy Corbyn. <laughs> his constituencies there in Islington. Oh, a lot of people of that like persuasion live around there, so I think of that. And then mm. what else would you think? I of think like Angel? trendy. It's quite a trendy part yeah, of it, isn't it? It's Although now trendy. it's all it's gone further north now, hasn't it? It's like moved around. Yeah. It's like Hoxton, it's then London expensive. Fields, and did. So Angel's now like... It's just got very expensive, I think. Do you know what well. also I think of Angel? I thought of um, like Angels and Demons. Yeah. I was thinking of like the film Constantine. And oh, do you know what it also reminds me of? What? It reminds me of Angels and Demons, the book. Yeah. So, anyway, so sorry. So we're still on A. Yeah. So that's Angel. So moving on to B. Next one is Balam. Oh, Balham. I've so got a lot of words for Balham. You used to live in Balham, right? I used to right? live in Balham, yeah. So Balham's yeah. in South London. I think of like yummy mummies, like young families, professionals, mm. lots of mummies with push chairs, that mm. type of vibe. So another word I would say is brunch, because it's very like Saturday, brunch. Sunday, people having brunch with avocado at 11 o'clock. It's very avocado. much that type of vibe. That's a great word for Balham, avocado. avocado. 
So we've got Yummy Mummy, Avocado. Can I, can I go? What would be your third one? Avocado, Aficionado, and Alfresco. Boom. Boom! There you go, so that's valid. Okay, next one is Barbican. Ooh, Barbican. So oh, yeah. Barbican is in northeast London and it's where they built, I think in the 60s, this massive concrete jungle of houses. That's all London. It, it also all has London like a theatre there and it's this really brutalist architecture. It gets Baroque. used in, in films. It's not Baroque, oh. it's brutalist. Yeah. I find that that brutalist architecture of Barbican just really like concrete and depressing but some people love it so i'm definitely first word is brutalist when i think of barbican i mm. think of the barbican theater yeah right and then i also think barbican i, I that you know the portcullis outside a fortress you know oh. that what's that the name but it's not portcullis portcullis is the thing that goes out over the moat okay what do you call that thing that comes down drawbridge no no, no drawbridge is there gate yeah what is that gate gate Ah, oh, because yeah. when I think of Barbican, I think of that big metal like gate, because that's like the symbol of the Barbican, isn't it? Oh, is it? it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so so what? brutalist gate, and I think theatre as well. So the next one is Barnes. Barnes. Oh, Barnes is like Ballum, but for rich people. Even richer. So Barnes is in West London. It's on the river. Mm. It has really bad train connections. It doesn't have a train station. That's not true. Barnes has an overground. Well, there you go. Well, no, but you're right. It, it's not brilliantly connected. So it's, it's, it's quite isolated. Yeah. It's quite affluent. It's very expensive. And it's also a yummy mummy place. Yeah. The way I describe it is, and again, if you don't know London, this may not mean a lot, but there's Chelsea, which mm. is like where young rich people yeah, live. Yeah, not got to that yet. No, no. no. But then you've got um, Ballum. Ballum is like the poor man's Chelsea. Hence why I lived there, and then you and then Barnes is like where the Chelsea the, the, the Chelseaites go I when they want a bigger place and everything. They move to Barnes. Older family and the Clapham people. Oh no, sorry, I got it wrong, wrong way out. Chelsea and Clapham. So Clapham is the poor man's Chelsea. Yeah. And then when people. So Barnes is kind of like for more established, like middle aged, probably a lot of people like retired people that have lived there their whole lives and now their house is worth like five million. Ten million. It's really beautiful to drive through. Um, so yeah. I'm gonna say like rich. Affluent. Yeah, affluent, like really pretty. It's pretty, But yeah. also like not that well connected. Some great schools there as well apparently. I can imagine. Mm. So next one, and you'll, you'll know this one, is mm. Battersea. Battersea, Yay. that's where we live. That's where we live. Yeah. So, but definitely first thing I think of is Battersea Cats and Dogs Home. I think of Battersea Power Station. Battersea Power Station, which is next to the Cats and Dogs home. Mm -hmm. And the Power Station is so cool. It was just like an abandoned old site. And then over the past like five, six years, it's been totally redeveloped. And now it's a massive shopping center. It has great restaurants, offices, hotels, everything. It's so cool. Mm -hmm. We go there a lot. Um, I was thinking of the river as well. Yeah, and I think of the like, river, like you've got Albert Bridge, which is beautiful. It lights up yeah. at night with all fairy yeah, lights. Amazing. And you see that used a lot in films because it's just a beautiful bridge. So I think like bridges over the river, mm -hmm. the power station and the cats and dogs home. I'd add two things as well. Okay. So I would add the underbelly of Battersea. So I would also mention the word gangs. And the reason why I mention the word gangs, even though it's very much being regenerated but back in like 2015 i think there was like a big do you remember the riots the oh, riots right. the riots were started in battersea i think back in the day yeah that's back in the day like 30 that back 40 years ago battersea was quite dodgy well my, my family lived there gangs was one word and then well, i had another word i was gonna i was gonna use and it's totally escaped me how let me just we try and remember gangs and then what was the other thing ah yeah there's a great documentary about um the investment into battersea power station yeah. yeah so check that out it's really cool basically in a nutshell there was investment from that large um sovereign wealth fund from Le malaysia oh yeah and that was like the basis for a lot of the like original like, investment into battersea power station right. turned out a lot of that money was um a bit shady but it's Let's benefited everyone around here, so thank so you. you. So next one on B is Belgravia. Oh, Belgravia. But so Belgravia, I always think of um, uh, art gallery. Is it the Tate? Is there in Belgravia, or is that Pimlico? No, that's 
Pimlico. They're Road. quite close though, Belgravia Pimlico. So Belgravia is like next to Chelsea. It's quite a uh, small yeah. area. Mm. It's super established, old money, like mm. people like Dukes and royalty probably live there. Yeah. Um, so it's definitely posh would be one hmm. word. How's it pronounced? Is it Bel Belgravia or Belgravia? I think it's Belgravia. I think it's Belgravia. Maybe if you live there it's Belgravia. Oh, Belgravia. It also has um, some really pretty shops. So Peggy Pusheen's cake shop is there. There's a street where lots of Instagrammers take pictures and they do these beautiful floral displays outside the shops. So oh, I yeah. Have flowers. I've and seen they, that place. they do it's every lovely. year they do Belgravia and Bloom and mm. have competition for all the shops. So oh, I think that's flowers, really nice. yeah. I think posh, and I think my third one would be like old money. So next one is Bermondsey. So Bermondsey is um, it's kind of like sandwiched between is it like London Bridge yeah. and uh, like Southwark and all that sort of area of Vauxhall and stuff. Yeah. It's sort of like in that pocket. It's over in East London near London Bridge. It used to be where there'd be a huge amount of docks, like yeah, all these old dock docks buildings right. from when London was doing all like shipping around the world or whatever mm -hmm. and they've all been converted into very like trendy apartments with like exposed mm -hmm. brick so I definitely think of like basically dock buildings trendy apartments which I would say for Bermondsey kind of kind of Bermondsey is still one of the pockets of London where there's still a lot of um old council housing oh, really? and there's quite a few estates council oh, estates there I didn't realize. and i could be wrong but i thought top boy was based on one of the council estates in bermondsey oh i thought it was meant to be tottenham tottenham could be tottenham could be bermondsey tottenham's on the other side of the river but Bermondsey is still pretty run down, although it's always being, you know, regenerated. But regenerated. the side that's by the river is super expensive and you've got a lot of yeah, offices there. Like London, and of course, London. London Bridge. So I'd say London Bridge, I'd say Docklands, mm. and you're saying I think Top Boy. I think Millwall and Top Boy would be my words. I think Millwall's in Bermondsey. Is Millwall in I think so. If I've got that wrong, I'm going to get a load of hate. But I'm, sure I'm, you pretty, I'm pretty sure it's around that area. Okay, so the next beat is Brixton. Brixton, okay. So Brixton's yeah. in South London. <coughs> I definitely think of Brixton Market, which yeah. is super famous. It's cool. I think, is it cool Franco market. Manco Pizza was started in Brixton Market? It's definitely one there. It's lots of I like trendy, edgy, like startup food things in the market. Yeah. 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 Um, street it has food, lovely. A big Caribbean community. Jamaican food there is great. So lot, yeah. Oh, some great Jamaican food there. I think of Electric Avenue. Oh, I'm going to rock, rock, rock down through Electric Avenue. Avenue. Will we get demonetised for that? No. Okay, cool. Yeah, so Electric Avenue is based on Electric Avenue in Brixton. What's Electric Avenue? Electric Avenue is a road in Brixton. Okay. Oh, We're going right. to rock so on through Electric road. Avenue. Oh, yeah, it's when it's like hustle and bustle. And it, it's you know, very it's, hustly bustly. And Brixton. sometimes you'll hear music playing. Yeah. You know, and there's, you know, there's like in the summer, there's always like, it's, you know, yeah. it's a bit of a party atmosphere. It's definitely a party atmosphere there. Yeah, yeah. And it's great because it's on the end of the Victoria Line. So actually, a lot of people like living there because it's great for work. It's good connected. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's got a lot of cool funky bars mm. there's um there's a really good open um outside bar oh i've forgotten what it's called in brixton oh, it's great in the summer okay is it box park there's a box park that's open there. i don't think is there the nah anyway carry on moving on so moving on to the seas camden town so camden town when i was like maybe 18 20 mm. and i would come to london camden town was like the cool edgy place yeah. to go yeah. you have like amy winehouse mm -hmm. people like that living there had all these like alternative shops like gothic shops punk shops yeah. indie grunge pubs really cool market um but now it's really not seen as cool no, I, think I think it's think become so. super touristy and you've got now like Starbucks and lots of like mainstream shops there and really I think the only people that really go around there are like tourists. It's a tourist space. Mm, so when I think of Camden yeah, Town, I, mean. I think of tourists. Secondly though, I do still think of like punk alternative still got, vibe. Yeah, it's still it's still still like a bit of a gig scene there. Mm. Some of these like indie pubs still have like good acts and stuff. Mm. So I guess third thing would then be music. Music would music. be would be a good one. The canal is obviously. Oh yeah, it's got a famous Camden canal. Lock. Lock, Camden Lock. That area is kind of similar, not in terms of the type of people that are there, but it's like Brixton in terms of you've got like in the summer around Camden Lock. It's a bit like Lock, a outdoor outdoor bar. stuff. So the next C is Canary Wharf. Boo. <laughs> so Canary Wharf was kind of built from nothing. So it's like 
way over in East London on an area that was basically just wasteland. And they basically built like another city mm -hmm. of office blocks and apartments. Mm -hmm. It's super modern. Yeah. It's where a lot of the banks have their massive offices. Yeah. And then at the weekend, it's basically deserted because it's just all office workers there. Yeah. And it's like a ghost town at the weekend. Du, 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 so I du, think- Ghost town. Like, for Canary Wharf, I definitely think like office, corporate, yeah, yeah, definitely. I think corporate, super modern. Corporate, modern, soulless. Soulless, I'd say soulless, yeah. Um, I mean, there are, basically the plan with Canary Wharf was in the city of London where the financial district has always been historically, where the Bank of England is, where all the big insurers are, Lloyds of London, everything. They're running out of space to, mm. to develop it and it's getting more and more expensive. Mm. So the city planners decided to like try and it's a up, great idea. uplift as many of the financial head offices as possible to Canary Wharf. So you've got HSBC, Barclays and JP You've Walker also got the DLR train that goes there that was built for yeah. it. And that train doesn't have a train driver. It's like automatic, it's quite slow. Um, and it's overground, but it's connected to the underground. Yeah, but it's, it's all right place, Canary Wharf, but it's, yeah, as you rightly say, at the weekends, it's yeah, not really a place anymore. The There's no point going there. Like, no one yeah. would visit there unless they worked there. Yeah, so next one is Chinatown. Ooh. So Chinatown for awesome. me, yeah, good, so good it's show. right in the middle of London, Leicester next Square, to Leicester Square, Delhi Circus, and next to like all the theatres and Shaftesbury Avenue and stuff. Mm. Um, it's super touristy, mm. super touristy. So that's definitely my first thing I think of. Yeah. Second thing I think of is I once went, once went to a restaurant there, or it was like a buffet, all mm -hmm. you can eat. It was really gross. And I remember when I walked out, I saw on the window. So in the UK, all restaurants yeah. have to have this hygiene rating and it has to yeah. be on the window. And it was a one star hygiene rating. Yeah. And I've never seen that in any ever and I just can't believe that I've been there. So I think of like that restaurant, Yeah. I think of tourists, and I guess Agreed. the other thing is... I'd, I think of casinos and gambling. When yeah, I think there's of China a few Town. casinos It's got there. Genting Casino, you've got loads of gambling shops, and yeah, I mean, yeah. there's also a lot of theatres very close to Chinatown. Yeah, I would say actually, there. Chinatown is actually really small compared to Chinatowns it's in other it's major cities. Like I went to Chinatown in New York and it was ginormous. The Chinatown in London is like one street. I would say actually for food, I'm going to get a load of hate here. When you go for food in Chinatown, um, do your research. Yeah. Don't just think, oh, I'm in Chinatown just rock up. and everything's going to be great Chinese food. Do a bit of research, yeah. ask around, look where, you know, it looks like locals are eating kind yeah. of thing. Um, don't just walk into anywhere. There are probably better Chinese restaurants slightly further Somewhere out. Else. Yeah, slightly yeah. further out. Super Chinatown. touristy. But, you know, I have had. I've had some, some really nice ones. I've had some amazing there. meals in Chinatown, but only from mixed. people that know the area yeah. and go there like for lunch all the time and stuff. So the next area is Clapham. So Clapham is where it's um, south and you've got Clapham North, Clapham Common, Clapham Junction. It's a massive area. It's right near Battersea where we live. And it's basically where a lot of young professionals live. So people who've left uni, they've got a job in London, everyone goes to this kind of area. Yeah. And like Saturday night, Friday night on the main like high street, you've got loads of clubs and bars all full of like 20 somethings. Yeah. You've lived in Clapham a lot when you were yeah. younger. First place I lived in. Loads London. of our friends live in Clapham. Like it's very much young, I say 20, 30 year olds. I would say vibes. a lot of people would lump Battersea and Clapham together wrongly because Battersea Sees on the river and Clapham's a yeah, bit further in. Yeah, but it's kind of merges a bit. <laughs> yeah, I would, um, I would say Clapham is student vibes. I would say it's... Um, it's a bit older than student vibes. Like, it's not student-y. Uh, okay. I'd oh, say okay. it's, like, young professionally. Fair and enough. it used to, like, sort of 15 years ago, it was very much up and coming. And now the house prices have got really high. Mm. So it's now relatively expensive. So I would say, like, I think of... Young professionals. I think yeah. of Clapham Common, which is a massive like green space in the middle, and I think I just think of house prices and the fact that they've gone up so much there. Yeah, yeah, it's quite expensive now, but that's everywhere now. I don't think you can isolate Clapham. I think even Acton has got expensive houses. Yeah, everywhere in London, right? Even Acton. That sounds so bad on Acton. <laughs> no hate on Acton. I love Acton. Acton massive. So the next area is Covent Garden. So Covent Garden is obviously super famous. Again, mm. right in the middle of town. It's basically a shopping destination. Yeah. Like, and you've got a lot of really nice shops there. 
and you've got the like opera, you've got the ballet. Oh yeah, yeah. You've got the market in the middle. Yeah. It's very touristy again, but it is somewhere where you might still go if you're not a tourist and you live here. Oh, yeah. But just not like on Saturday at midday because it'll just be crazy busy. The word I would use is performance or performers because you've, oh, yeah. you've got the Royal Ballet there, you've got theatres there and you always have street performers Always has there. the street performance. And it's got the really nice central area mm. in, um, in Covent Garden where people can sit up on the top of, yeah. uh, well, I've forgotten the name of the bar, um, but then you can and down watch. around it. And in the summer it's great, there's always like three or four street shops. performers and it's, it's, it's really cool. Also the Apple Store is fantastic, oh, yeah, it's, it's, their, mo store it's their most profitable store I believe oh. in the world after the other one, the one in Oxford Street. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really profitable. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love that store. It's great. So performance, Apple and okay. shopping. Yeah, definitely shopping. Okay, so next I've got going into E now, Earl's Court. <laughs> so Earl's Court is such a weird area. It's an area we drive through a lot. It has a main road out it's London. It's hard to describe. So West it? London. So it's so weird because it's next to Kensington. Yeah. It's like zone one, like really close to central London. Yeah. But it when you drive through it, there is it's it has so many run down buildings sketchy people walking around and it's like why is this area that's like so central not been developed so I find it quite a mysterious area. Well, I've heard many many times that that Earl's Court development is going to regenerate the whole area and it's going to be back to where Hopefully. it was yeah so that's that's been said for years. I think it used to be like 100 years ago whatever yeah. really posh it has these really big old grand Georgian Edwardian buildings that are mm. now just like run down and mm. like I feel like they're motels it's like a motel yeah vibes. there's a lot of motel hotels there um mm. and it also used to have the big convention center there as well which is being cool. redone is it being redone yeah yeah I've not been there for ages because it's closed because it's been redone being, yeah the whole <laughs> thing's being re yeah yeah um, okay. So that's Earl's Court. Yeah, it's a bit of a weird one, Earl's Court. So we haven't Court. really given it three words, there, have we? Okay, so sketchy people, that's, you can't convention centre. centre. These, are not, these are like many words. And mysterious. Mysterious. I wouldn't call Earl's Court mysterious. I think it's mysterious. I would call it like, what's a word for where you have like lots of different... Mishmash. Mishmash. Mm. Mishmash. Okay, so next E is Elephant and Castle. So Elephant and Castle is really interesting. So it used to have in it uh, the biggest uh, council estate in Europe, I mm. think, and it was very dangerous, lots of gangs there. Basically, in the past 10 years, they've knocked it all down and huge redevelopments, all these apartments going up, like really tall buildings. They've completely transformed it and now it's quite a trendy place to go. Mm. So I think of, first of all, I think of the fact that it's such a cool name, Elephant and Castle. And there is like a little elephant with a castle on its head there, isn't there, mm. somewhere, which is cool. Mm. I think of redevelopment. Yeah, redevelopment, definitely. And I think of like trendy. Uh, I wouldn't say trendy, no. Okay. I, I know what you mean yeah. in terms of like, it's now being- Young people. It, they are, tr there's a lot of investment going in there. They've taken down a lot of the old buildings, mm. council buildings and stuff. There used to be a huge gang problem in Elephant and Castle. Mm. In fact, it was one of, in it was South like the London, most dangerous place. It was the most dangerous place. Like, I'd never let you walk around anywhere in London at night, but there was like a lot of stabbings yeah. and things. That's all gone. Well, I say it's all gone, but it, they've definitely sort of helped sort of try and address that problem. Yeah, so there's um, there's obviously a lot of redevelopment going on in Elephant and Castle, um, which is great. Mm. And the other final thing I'd say about Elephant and Castle is music. Okay. Believe it or not, Ministry of Sound. Ministry of Sound is in Elephant oh. and Castle. So house music, been. it's like the home of house music, I would say. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of other clubs in London, but Ministry is the most sort of commercially well-known. And it was the Elephant and Castle was brown on, is it brown on the Monopoly board? Mm -hmm. That's the worst tower, but I'd say now it'd probably be a bit higher, maybe blue rather than brown. I'm a huge fan of Monopoly, as you can probably tell. So next one, moving into F, we have Fulham. So Fulham's across the river from Battersea, and it's sort of to the west of Chelsea. Yeah. And it's actually where Chelsea Football Club is. Chelsea yeah. Football Club is it's not in Chelsea, Fulham. it's yeah, in yeah. Fulham. So I think of Chelsea Football Club. It's very expensive, lots of these old terrace houses. And I also think of the district line, because yeah. it's on the green district line, which is quite rubbish oh, underground. It's, it's really, slow. It's really, really slow. So it's not great 
to live in terms of connections. Okay, so next one moving into G is Greenwich. So Greenwich is over in East London. It's a, the home of time. M mean time. <laughs> Greenwich yeah. mean time. So you've got like a big, on top of a hill, there's like a museum about where they set and came up with time and having one time for the whole country, well, GMT, GMT. GMT is Greenwich Mean Time, isn't it? And that's yeah, where zero and then is. the whole world goes around that. So you're either like plus one, plus two, mm. as you go around the world from zero being Greenwich Mean Time. So did we invent time? Of course we invented time. <laughs> wow, I thought Einstein invented time. Mm. And there's also a massive Royal Navy College there. Yes, Naval College, yeah. With loads of, it's really old, really cool, lots of Navy stuff. Mm. And I think the other thing I think of is, it's quite bougie, isn't it? You've got, again, lots of like brunch places, lots this of- This was the place a guy got beheaded. How's that bougie? Oh. Do you remember that soldier who sadly was- So you can't, I can't, you can't, Talk about Greenwich without mentioning the O2 Arena. Oh yeah, the massive O2 yeah. Arena. So that part is expensive. Well, yeah, it's got an apartment there. It's okay. A nice apartment. So next one is in H is Hackney. Ooh, Hackney. So Hackney's up in northeast London, quite far out of town. I'm going to use this word again, but it is very trendy, Hackney, right? Mm, so Shoreditch was the alternative place a few years ago, and I think that's now become very expensive, and I feel like a lot of that, mm. those type of Shoreditch people have moved to Hackney. Mm. Like, it's quite arty, young, yeah. like, alternative vibes, tr just very trendy. Yeah, it's like, it's basically like you've got Camden and Hackney. Yeah. You've then got London Fields, yeah. Got Shoreditch, all it's that kind all of stuff. sort of North sort of East London has these like trendy young areas. Mm. I think of like it being really far away. Like to get to Hackney from here would take over Ages. an hour. Yeah. yeah, it's just like trendy. Mm. Hammersmith. So what do you think of for Hammersmith? The Apollo. Yeah, so it's the theatre the Apollo. Also, there's a, a science and technology college there, I believe. Oh, that really? just built. Do you remember we drove past it on the way to Heathrow? So Hammersmith has the Hammersmith flyover, which is like yes. the only road in London that's like ab above ground, it sort of bypasses it. And um, it's like the main way to get from London to Heathrow Airport or out of town that way. And then it has all these big buildings as you're driving over this like mm. motorway, which is quite cool. So I definitely yeah. think of that. I always think of Brentford because you go over- Brentford Football Club. Yeah, when you go over the flyover, you see you Brentford. You can see it at the side. But Brentford's probably not, they'll probably argue that it's not Hammersmith, it's somewhere next. else. Yeah, maybe. Okay, so the next one I have here is Hampstead. Ooh, I think of a Heath. Yeah, so Hampstead has is quite a big area. You've got Hampstead Heath, which is like a hill park, and a lot of very wealthy people live there. So it has a lot of big houses, mm. like stately houses, like Old super artists, expensive. Creative. Celebrities, Ricky Ricky Gervais Gervais. lives there. Really, really beautiful, really, really posh. And like mm. you're in London, you can get on the tube and be in London and like like in the middle of London in like 15 minutes, but you basically, it's like living in the country almost. Mm. And then you've also got West Hampstead, which is where I lived when I first came yeah. to London for six months, which is a little bit more built up, townhouses type thing, but it's also very posh, very expensive. But Hampstead, I definitely think like massive houses, mm -hmm. Hampstead Heath, and yeah, just really rich people basically. Yeah, can't argue with that. So next one I have is Harrow. I know Harrow. You do? Yeah. So Harrow has the famous Harrow boarding school where a lot of like politicians go and they all wear like fancy outfits to school every day. Yeah, but that's not what all of Harrow is like. What's the rest of Harrow like? Well, Harrow is nice. Harrow is a nice area, um, but it's quite suburban. It's a lot of like semi-detached houses. A lot of the oh, houses were built in, built 60s, in the 70s, 60s, 70s. Yeah, those types of houses. It's quite far out of town. It's quite far out. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty it's like modern suburban. Whereas like Balham is like a lot of Victorian houses. So it's like not 70s, 60s yeah. type houses. So don't think Harrow is like Chelsea or whatever. No, Harrow is, is, is more sort of middle class, upper middle class, maybe a mixture actually, because you've got like inner city schools and stuff there. So it's a bit of a okay. mixture. Yeah. So next one for Kay is Kensington. So Kensington is just north of Chelsea mm. and Kensington is... Is that where the British Museum is? Natural History Museum. Yeah, you've got all the massive museums. So that's definitely one. Victoria and Albert Museum, our favourite museum. Yeah, yeah, all those big museums. You've got Kensington Palace, where William and Kate live. Do they, do they live there? Yeah. 
think so. Oh yeah, because they talk about KP yeah. and BP. Yeah, Buckingham Palace, Kensington Palace. See? And that's sort of just off the park, Hyde Park, like really beautiful, quite mm. touristy. It's also got quite a lot of shopping, it's quite busy, it's got a big shopping street. I would never go to Kensington. Yeah, I wouldn't go shopping, it's quite touristy quite bustly um but definitely the museum area is super cool okay so next up i have q spelled k-e-w so q is west london uh -huh. and it has the famous q gardens which is like a, a massive massive yeah i don't know what you would call it gardens gardens i guess massive like and they do a lot of like plant research there and stuff. They have a lot of rare plants. Do they really? Yeah. Well, I suppose it makes sense. If it's a garden, it's a good but place to research plants. massive, right? It's really old as well. Is it near Hampton Court? It, yeah, it's, it's on the way to Hampton Court. On the way to Hampton Court. And I think there are houses in Kew Gardens where royalty have lived back in the day and that was their mm. garden. Is that Henry VIII's time? It's that sort of time, yeah. It's oh. a really ancient area. So I definitely think of the gardens. Mm -hmm. I definitely think of like beautiful, expensive houses all around there. It's a really nice place mm. to live. So next one is King's Cross. Ooh. So King's Cross has a major railway station in. It's one of the railway stations on Monopoly. It's up in North East London. And you've got King's Cross, St Pancreas, which is where the Eurostar tunnel is, the tra where you can get the train to France. So definitely think of trains. It's like train central. I think it used to be quite dodgy right there. It used to be really dodgy. I remember, so I used to, because I lived in the Midlands, King's Cross was the station that we would arrive in. Mm. And before they redeveloped King's Cross, it was known to have lots of prostitutes mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of begging and a lot of drugs. And it was, you know, I remember as a child arriving with my mum and I'd just you'd have, you know, people coming up to you, beggars and stuff. It was like really open and, and it was quite, a lot of people felt quite uncomfortable. Now it's been redeveloped. They've all been moved on. All these modern buildings, yeah. restaurants, yeah. loads of apartment buildings. So now my memory of it is totally changed. Now it's, I think of uh, St Pancras Hotel, which yeah. is a beautiful building, probably architecturally one of my favorite buildings in all of London. And um, it's in the British Library that's the British there British Library's well. there as well. But there's also this guy that lives in the clock tower he there, He lives right? in the clock tower of St Pancras. Station. So, no. Or Saint, building? It's, well, it's St. Pancras Hotel. Okay, of the hotel. And but it's he, an apartment. Though. He owns an apartment in the actual clock tower. And like every month they have to come into his apartment and service the bell as part of his lease. It's crazy. Um, and yeah, it's, it's quite a quirky little place. Check it out, it's a cool video. So next one, moving on into the L's. Leicester Square. That's an L. Yes, moving on into the L's, Leicester Square. So Leicester Square, I think of stress because yeah, it's meant to. it is so busy with tourists i get really stressed walking through there because you just can't mm -hmm. like people just stop in front of you it's just so busy you've got m m world which is the most bizarre shop ever like who needs m m's that mm. much that they need a whole massive world it's, shop it's meant it's like it's, you can smell the chocolate when you walk yeah. past it and it's like really expensive it's as well like super, everything's super so expensive, expensive around leicester square which then reminds me why are there so many candy stores? Oh in yeah. That we need to do a video just on that. So there's so They're many empty. like prime retail locations that have these sweet shops, candy shops. And I think it's some kind of money laundering scheme or something. I think we should cut that out. <laughs> because we have nothing against the criminal underworld in London <laughs> and how they want to front up their businesses and launder their money. It's up to them. It's got nothing to do with me. But and no, as a member of, um, of, of a Sicilian family, I would like to abstain from this conversation. You got it, dude. So let's just where I think of bit stressful. 50 cent. I take you to the candy store. <laughs> what you want, you want. <laughs> Does that get demonetized just no. in there? Okay. <laughs> Props to 50 cent. So there you go, candy, tourist, 50 cents. stressful, and of course all the premieres are there, you've got a massive cinema. Oh but yeah, they, the they did June, premiers. so June 2 they did the premiere there and they covered the whole square sand. in sand. Crazy. That is mental, yeah. mental, mental, so, mental. Imagine if it was raining, that would just turn into mud, Oh my it? god, yeah. There you go. So on. on that note, I think we're going to have to do a part two video because we're like halfway through the alphabet. Um, so we will do a part two video later and I'll leave it linked down below. But yeah, that's our whistle stop tour of half of the areas in London. Let us know what else you'd add for any of these places in the comments down below. But that's it. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye.